The title of the video isn't clickbait, it isn't sarcasm, it's not a practical joke or some kind of prank. It is the God honest truth. With my hand on a stack of Bibles, I swear to you before the Lord and anime that I am being genuine when I say Twitch actually just made an incredible decision. We are witnessing history. I feel like some of the people that took the first manned airplane flight where you know what you have just experienced is a game changer, is super special, and you are part of history. That's how I feel right now with this. A very rare instance where Twitch does something that I can't help but applaud and really appreciate. So, last year we updated our simulcasting policy to allow simulcasting on mobile services such as TikTok and Instagram. On my recent trip, a number of streamers talked about how they are leveraging these services to grow their Twitch community. So today, we're taking this a step further and announcing that we are allowing simulcasting on any live streaming service. Daniel Clancy, you beautiful son of a gun, you put a smile on my face and made me wet. Now, for those that don't know why this is such a big deal, I'll dive into it, but that right there is the new CEO of Twitch. He took over earlier this year. He replaced the previous CEO who was extraordinarily hands-off on the platform. Many of you probably didn't even know Twitch had a CEO because this guy was more secretive than the elusive man. Like, this fucking guy seemed to be ashamed to be the CEO of the platform. His name was Emmett Shear, or as I like to call him, Emmett, have no fear, I'm barely here, Shear. If you went to any of his socials over the long time that he was the CEO of Twitch, you would have no idea what his position was. Because he didn't talk about the platform, he didn't interact with it, he didn't stream on it, he didn't communicate with anyone on it. I'm pretty sure he doesn't even know who XQC is, even to this day, or Kai Sinat for that matter. Like, he doesn't know anyone on the platform, no matter how big they are. He just really, he treated his position as CEO of Twitch the same way I treated boners back in high school, like random erections, just trying to like hide it the best you possibly can and hope nobody notices. So Emmett Shear for a long time was CEO in name only. I don't think he actually really did anything for the platform except try and fucking flush it down the shitter. And earlier this year, he stepped down and Dan Clancy, whom you just saw, stepped up. Now, when he first stepped up, I made the statement that he is an extremely nice guy. I had actually met Dan before he became the CEO of the platform, and I had nothing but positive things to say about him, but I did say that I don't see any big changes coming under his leadership because I really don't believe that he had the capability to make big sweeping changes or improvements to the platform because there's just so much red tape, and the inner workings of the company are more divided than my ass cheeks. Like, everything is so separated into their own departments and no one really communicates with one another, so it leads to a lot of discrepancies and miscommunications, at least in my experience from talking to some of the employees and about how the sausage is made there at Twitch, you know, the behind the scenes information and all of that. And to further explain, I'll go ahead and use my Twitch contract as an example. I actually talked to Dan directly about that, and he was super supportive of me canceling my contracts, that way I could explore streaming on YouTube. He was super enthusiastic about it, he understood, and he said he had his blessing, but it wasn't up to him entirely. It still had to go through all of the other teams and all the other filters, and that took an additional, like, three or four months, I think. I I'm getting a little foggy on exactly the timeline now since it's been a while. But the fact that Dan, being the CEO of Twitch, still had to go through three or four months for something as simple as canceling my contract, which was already kind of getting towards the end of its duration anyway, just led me to be more convinced that even if Dan came in with the best of intentions, which I really do think he did, that he wouldn't be able to make the changes that he'd want to see in the platform. But boy howdy, I've never been happier to be proven wrong. Uh, eating my own asshole has never tasted so good. It is great to see Dan actually being able to have a positive influence on Twitch. This is absolutely a decision that Dan himself would pitch. From our conversation, I know that this is something he felt strongly about, that streamers shouldn't be tied down to Twitch if they don't want to be. So it seems like he was able to push this forward and make it come to fruition and make it a reality, which is absolutely incredible. And for those that don't know, Dan loves Twitch. Like, he lives and breathes the platform. He actively streams on there himself, just doing, like, some music. Like, he is a, he's, like, actually extremely talented, so he does some kind of fire streams, and he is very much a user of the product, enthusiastic about it. There's a, a, a Twitch 
well, not a Twitch clip. There is a clip on Kick where one of the Kick streamers saw Dan just roaming around, and they said, "Oh, sorry, I'm live on Kick right now." And Dan goes, "You know what? That's your choice." And then gives him a high five and just walks away with a big smile on his face. He just seems to love streaming, and he wants Twitch to get back to its former glory of being the best place to do it. And give everyone the freedom to stream how they want and where they want. And I couldn't be more ecstatic about that. So let's go over why this simulcasting change is so massive. Because it almost sounds too good to be true. For those that don't know what simulcasting is, it's the ability for you to start up a stream on multiple platforms at the same time. And Twitch has always hated that. They hated simul streaming more than Timmy Turner's dad hated the Dinklebergs. So they outlawed it. They made it against their terms. You couldn't simul stream. If you were doing a Twitch stream, it needed to be content exclusive to Twitch. You couldn't just have that stream being pumped out to a lot of other places, except for mobile platforms, like Dan mentioned. They did eventually allow for that, where you could simul stream your Twitch stream to mobile platforms, but you couldn't do that otherwise. Unless, of course, you were like a completely unaffiliated account. And even then, it's not like they really uh, encouraged it. It was still very frowned upon. It was more forbidden than human transmutation and Full Metal Alchemist. Until today. This was like one of the main things I thought Twitch would never, ever even consider backing off on. I thought Twitch would always stick to their guns on simul streaming being against their rules. Because if you really stop to think about it, why would they? Twitch is still the number one streaming platform. And now, if streamers have the flexibility to stream their Twitch broadcast to other platforms at the same time, why wouldn't they? There isn't a single reason why anyone on Twitch wouldn't also just stream to YouTube. It's the same content, you just put it to two different places, so it just maximizes your reach and viewership, and it's just an overall net positive to the streamer, but doesn't really do a whole lot to help out Twitch that much. Unless, of course, you're mainly interacting with your Twitch audience and, like, your YouTube streaming audience is seeing that, oh, the Twitch chat seems a lot more hype than the YouTube chat. I'll start going over there. Then maybe you do get some new users that aren't already endemic to Twitch. I think there's definitely a real case to be made there in that argument. And perhaps it'll be extremely effective. Like, maybe if you're broadcasting your Twitch stream to YouTube and your YouTube audience is now seeing your stream for the first time and wants to get more involved, they'll go to Twitch because the interaction on Twitch is just genuinely better than YouTube, which is something I've talked about quite a bit at length now. So I, I do think there probably is a case to be made that this is a strong move for Twitch in order to continue to grow and stay on top. But regardless, it is by far the best move for streamers. And it's not like this comes with any like fine print or anything. If you go to the page that makes the announcement that really breaks down what you can and cannot do, they are very lenient. The only thing that they ask you not to do is try and drive your Twitch audience to other streaming platforms while you're simul streaming. So let's say you're streaming Twitch and YouTube. Instead of like saying, hey, Twitch audience, go to YouTube. You're going to like it better over there. You know, we've, we've got the hottest babes in the YouTube chat over there. So get on out of Twitch and go to YouTube. They don't want you doing that. They also don't want you like combining the chats into one for the stream because they want it to feel like if it's on Twitch, it is a Twitch production, even though it's other places. It is still like the Twitch audience is getting the most love. So that way you're still celebrating with the Twitch community, which I think are both very understandable positions to have here for like the policy. It, there's really not much else. Everything else is kind of sunshine and rainbows from what I can tell. So obviously I'm going to start simul streaming YouTube and Twitch. I can finally shake the cobwebs off of my old Twitch channel here, which has just been collecting dust. It was like that scene at a Toy Story where Andy says, I don't want to play with you anymore, and then drops him. That's what I did with Twitch. And I've been loving my time on YouTube, but now there's absolutely no reason not to also stream on Twitch. I get the best of both worlds here. It's fantastic. I started streaming on Twitch. I still loved Twitch, but I switched to YouTube because I wasn't confident in the direction Twitch was going at the time. But now, I can do both. It's, it feels great. Like, this is such a huge W move. It cannot be understated just how big of a deal this decision is from Twitch. And, man, absolute hats off to Dan Clancy on this one. Fuck yes. So, definitely wanted to talk about this. I'll be doing my first simul stream tonight. I don't know what time. Probably, like, 10 p.m. EST, somewhere in that general ballpark. So... Uh, make sure to tune in if you if you want to see what this is, this new experience is going to look like. I'm really excited, and this really gives me a lot of hope in Twitch actually, you know, starting to steer the ship in the right direction again. So, yeah, that's really about it. So, yeah.